What's up guys and welcome back to Project Time Garage. So my buddy calls me the other day and says, my truck's missing, it's shuddering, doesn't run good at all. So he gets it to my house, this is said truck. As a matter of fact, this truck's been on the Project Time Garage channel before. As a matter of fact, this truck's been on here enough times that it officially gets its own playlist. I'll link that up here. Um, anyway, this time we're going to figure out what's wrong with it and fix whatever's wrong with it. Let's get started. So the first step to any proper diagnosis is opening the hood. There, step one, complete. So the first thing that comes to mind when it's missing, our vehicle's missing, gotta be the spark plugs. Oh wait, it's a diesel, scratch that. Obviously it's got a cylinder missing, right? I've just got a cylinder not contributing to the rest. Two ways we can kind of narrow that down. Now I can tell you right off, this truck's got 200 237,000 miles on it. I don't know if it's ever had injectors in it in its life. He doesn't know this either. Most likely the injectors are tired and most likely he has an injector that is giving him problems. That's probably what's gonna happen, but we're not just gonna throw some injectors in it. We're actually gonna figure this out using our cell phone. Um, there's an application called Forescan and uh, it works really good for uh, pretty much all the Ford vehicles. You can make a lot of parameter changes and do a lot with them, but they're particularly helpful with power stroke trucks. Uh, particularly older power stroke trucks. I don't know about the newer stuff. Um, the, my newest diesel stops at 6.0 and it does a good job there. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get into the Forescan app and let's see if we can figure out what the culprit is. What I'm gonna use is this, uh, this Bluetooth OBD, OBD2 reader from BAFX products. Um, I'll put a link down in the description below uh, for Amazon where you can get this. This works really good with uh, applications like Torque and applications like Forescan. And my camera's focus is garbage. Anyway, there you go. That's what we have. Let's plug it in. Right there. Now, you'll have to pair this with your phone, but luckily, mine's already paired. Let's open Forescan. So this is the Forescan application, and you can tell by the top left corner that we're not connected to any vehicles. I'm gonna click the connect button, and Forescan should find my OBD2 adapter, and it should pair with it. All right, we see that our little icon at the top left corner is turned green. That means that we're connected to the truck. First thing I'm gonna do is just jump right into errors. And there's bunches of them in the gym. There's nothing that I can see. Let me go ahead and we'll use this button here to reread everything. So there's no error codes found right now. Let's go ahead and go back and let's see if we can go ahead and start running some tests on this thing. So since I suspect it's an injector because we run across this a lot, I'm gonna click on the tests button down here. And there is um, this third option down here, KOEO. That means key on, engine off, injector electrical self-test. So if I hit this, you see it puts a check mark down there by the left, and then the play button up on the top right. So I'm gonna hit that play button. What I'm listening for here is I'm listening for the injectors and how crisp and how loud the buzz is. What is buzz? Buzz is the the little solenoid, the electrical solenoid that sits on top of the injector. This solenoid right here on the top, this is what we're buzzing that actually uh, actuates the passageway for the high pressure oil to mash a plunger down and squirt diesel fuel down into the cylinders at extreme pressures, right? So that's, that's what I'm listening for. This solenoid has a pronounced loud uh, click to it, a very crisp click, right? The idea here is we're going to buzz these injectors and we're gonna to listen to these solenoids and see how loud and how crisp they are. Scale is loud and crispy equals good injector. Quiet and lethargic equals bad injector. No noise at all equals really dead injector, probably unhooked or something like that. So here's what we're gonna do. 
inside the Forescan app, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this test. The first thing you're going to hear is all eight injectors buzz in harmony all at once, right? Then it's going to buzz injector one, then two, then three, then four. Basically, we're going to listen to them all and ignore that, and then we're going to play the loud quiet game. So, so let's do this. I'm going to hit run. And it's going to tell me that the vehicle has got to be not moving in neutral, fan may operate, so on and so forth. I hit the OK button. Now, the key has to be in the ignition, and the ignition has to be in the on position. Remember the K-O-E-O -E portion of it? Key on, engine off. So anyway, let's cut over to the, uh, cut over to the Forescan app. Check it out. We hit play. It's going to tell us that, hey, truck's got to be parked. Some things have to be right. It is, it's right, we hit okay. All eight, now, one, okay. Distinctly, number one was extremely, extremely quiet, right? We heard a loud buzz with eight and then quiet and loud, 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 loud. Let's do it again, just to make sure that our ears weren't playing tricks on us. Here it goes. All eight. This one will be quiet. Yep. Good, 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 good. That tells me that injector one is definitely quiet. It's noticeably quieter than the rest, all right? So the next thing we're going to do is going to be a uh, key on engine running test. And this is going to be the cylinder contribution test. And basically the, the ECU is just measuring um, how much contribution each cylinder is making. And if there's a weak one, then it'll let us know. Not as good as a, a nice graph, but this this will get it, get it done, right? Anyway, we're going to start the truck. Hopefully the noise isn't too much. And um, we'll do this test. Stand by. Okay, so our truck's running. It's noisy back there. Back to force scan we go, right? This time I'm gonna go back to tests. And back to tests. This time I'm going to use cylinder contribution self-test, right? We hit the play button. It's gonna tell you to make sure that it's in park and the engine's warm, vehicle's not moving, so on. We're good. So we hit okay, and here we go. All right, and immediately we get a PO263. Cylinder one, remember that's the quiet injector, contribution balance. Let's turn the noisy truck off, Let's talk about this for a second. Is that definitive proof? Absolutely not. Is it enough proof that I'm comfortable sticking an, at least one injector in this truck? Absolutely. So I talked it over with my buddy. He agrees that it's worthwhile to go ahead and put that injector in it. Uh, in fact, I think we're gonna go a little further we're going to put a set of injectors in it. And while we're under there, we'll go ahead and replace the, um, the under valve cover wiring harness assembly because those are known to get all janky and cracked up over time. So may as well do that while we're there. And also, we're gonna stick a set of glow plugs in there. There's no reason for me to believe that there's anything wrong with these glow plugs because the truck starts, typically it starts beautifully, even on really cold mornings, according to my friend. But you know, you're right there. Glow plugs are ultra cheap. So we're gonna go ahead and do that while we're at it. Uh, might I mention, get quality glow plugs if you're gonna do this project. Uh, these particular ones will be Motorcraft uh, glow plugs. And the under uh, valve cover harness, go OEM if you possibly can on that too. Um, when it comes to internal engine components on these things, don't skimp, uh, it'll leave you stranded. Believe me, it'll leave you stranded. Things like your injectors, 
high pressure oil pump, your ICP, your IPR, your glow plugs, your harnesses, those things, buy the good stuff. Accessories, whatever, but buy the good stuff on that stuff. We'll see you with some injectors. First thing we're gonna do is get the battery cables loose. As a matter of fact, this battery is coming out. Oh, by the way, remember the last video when I did the battery cables on my truck? Um, I'll link that right here. Remember I was talking about the people that hold their, their battery cables on with vice grips? See, I wasn't kidding about that. That really happened. True story, bro. Also, since this bad boy is a diesel, it has two batteries. Don't forget to unhook the negative on both of your batteries before you start this little venture. Yeah, so usually we'll start with all these breather, breather hoses here. You'll have two, two eight millimeters on the back side of that right there. Now that we can see the compressor side of the turbo, this is the perfect time to check it for play. Grab, the, grab that nut in there and pull in and out on it. Should be no movement. And up and down should be no movement. So yeah, you're checking up and down, you're checking in and out, and there should be no movement at all. Next order of business is we can get the, the charge air pipes loose. Uh, we're gonna do the driver's side first, so we'll go ahead and pull the driver's side charge air pipe. When you're loosening these clamps, do not loosen them from this side. This is aluminum, it's real soft. And when you start to tighten this thing back down, if you tighten it too much, it'll actually collapse this and spit that hose out. And once it does that, you're buying uh, a tube. So when you take them off, take them loose from the intake plenum side. That's uh, a nice rigid pipe and you can basically squeeze down until you break the, the band clamp. You're not gonna hurt the, that. So always take them off from this side. Looser than you think you need them. Here's what we do is we just grab it right here and we just give it a nice yank and unseat it. There we go. Now, the other clamp. Down here in front of the intercooler, right here is our other one. And we're gonna again, take it loose on the intercooler side so we're not crushing that pipe. Next thing is, we'll just grab this whole pipe here and we'll just move it all forward and it should just roll up out of the hole there. And out we go. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this 42-way connector out of the way. It just has a 10 millimeter bolt right there. As you back the, the bolt out, it unplugs itself. So that's a 10 millimeter. And we'll just hang that back somewhere out of our way. We're down to valve cover bolts. So we're just gonna walk around the valve cover. The first two we're gonna take off are the bracket for the 42A connector. And there's, there's a significant amount of torque to them, so you'll have to. And then once they break loose, they're no problem. See? Now we should be able to lift up that bracket and get that 42 way out of our way. I usually just fold it back out of the way under something and now's another also a good time to unplug our under valve cover, under valve cover wiring harness that attaches there to the valve cover. You push in, push down and unplug, there you go. There's that, and the only the only ones that are really tough to tough to get off, valve cover bolt wise, are the ones that are under this valve. There, this PCV breather. It's tempting to take those 
it's tempting to take these uh, these screws out right here and pull that top off, but if you do, you'll need an O-ring kit to put it back together. So don't do that. I uh, found it easiest is to use a, uh, a ratchet wrench underneath there for the one that's, that's trapped under there. The rest of them you can get to pretty easy. So I usually just take everything off that I can get to with a ratchet and then come back. Wow, was that loose? Wasn't very tight. Wow. Now that we have all of the bolts out, we can just lift the valve cover out of its little resting place. And here's what we have for the inside of the valve cover. Nice and clean. Now we can see what we're here after. The injectors. So usually the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll get the glow plug unplugged and we'll get the injector clips themselves unplugged. I usually start with the injector plugs just because they're the easiest. And basically it's just flipping the little wire down and pushing the wire down and unplugging it. Luckily, plugging them back up is way worse. Those are glow plugs are a pain to plug back up. So the glow plugs are right there on the top, right next to the injectors. All right, so injectors unplugged, glow plugs unplugged. We can lift up the valve cover and harness assembly and get it out of our way too. So the 7.3 injectors are only held in by this bolt right down here on the bottom. You, it's tempting to loosen the one on the top, don't do it. This is the only one that matters. So we'll do this one right here on all four injectors on this side. Next is the injector exhaust ports. And the exhaust ports are these little guys right here on the top, that Allen head right there, that's your exhaust ports. So before those, there'll be Allen heads. So for those exhaust ports, it's just as simple as pulling them off. Just Back in the, and they're going to be tight. You're going to have to really get down with them. And this is what the port looks like here. Next thing we're going to get out of the way, these Allen head bolts right here, little plugs. These are plugs. So this up here, this whole big log, that's your high pressure oil rail. And the reason we want to do this is we want to pull this oil or pull these plugs and let the oil drain out into the head here under the valve cover instead of having it drain into the cylinder when we pull the injector out. So there's two of them. There's one here and there's one back here right there. And those are, I believe those are Allen as well. So we'll get those out. So now that those are out of there, you can see the, the oil draining out. So there's that. Nothing left next but to pull the injectors out of the thing. These things are in pretty well. So what we can do is we can take a pry bar and put under the back uh, the, under the back side of the lip. Now keep in mind I'm not under the injector. I'm under the the injector hold down bracket, and we just push up. And you may have to get a bigger one than this. Give it hell. Keep going. You don't have to pry on any, one, any more spots. Just keep rocking it right there. Don't have enough push to it, does it? All right. Just usually what I'll do is I'll take this side and push it up and then take that right there and just lift it down. It'll should pop right out. All right, there's that one out. All right, next gonna be the glow plugs. We're gonna pull those. Those are 
right there at about the one o'clock position. All right, and the glow plugs themselves are 10 millimeter. Those should be as oily as can be too. You got it loose, the threads are short, you just, your socket's binding up on the, on the thing. And this will happen. I just don't drop anything in the combustion chamber. Nothing at all. Yeah, it should be. Okay, at this stage, we have the injectors out of it, the oil drain plugs out of the uh, out of the oil log, and we have the glow plugs out of it. Before we go back in with anything, we're going to go ahead and put the oil uh, galley drain plugs back in it because this is not something you want to forget. Truck won't build high pressure oil, injectors won't injector, things go bad. Just being very careful not to drop anything down those injector bores. Now ain't the time to pull the head. I'm saying that for the people, not for you. You know, definitely just for the people, not for you. Okay, here are all the goodies that we have Going back in this thing, we got four AB injectors, early 99 for one side, four AB injectors, early 99 for tether. We have an ICP, the under valve cover wiring harness, times two. We have uh, glow plugs, Ford Motorcraft, times eight. We have the valve cover gaskets, some arch oil, a new filter, and a gallon of oil. Yeah, it'll take more than a gallon of oil. I just didn't want to set all that up there. Let's get the new injectors for this side unboxed. The old one's back in the box because there's a core charge. There's always a core charge. And uh, we're going to go back in with these injectors. Should have this truck back together on this side in about 30 minutes. So these, these injectors are from full force, obviously. And no, they're not sponsored of this channel. The friend bought them. So there's the injector. We're looking for AB on the top. We do see AB, so they're the right ones. They come with fresh O-rings. And don't forget to pull this little rubber end off of here before you send it home. Also, make double sure positive that this crush washer right here is on there and it's not, um, it, it didn't fall off. Make sure it doesn't fall off during installation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my bud, his injector, when it's ready to go, and then um, he'll put it in. So we're gonna make sure that we get plenty of oil on these uh, O-rings before we get started. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get some oil in my hand. I know it's gross and terrible, but there's an injector all oiled up. Okay, so we're getting ready to go back in with these injectors, but I'll tell you, before you do that, go ahead and take a minute to look down all of the, the bores down where your injector cups are and make sure that you don't have like a uh, one of those copper washers that accidentally fell off one of your injectors or something down in there. That, that's actually happened before. So just eyeball all your bores, make sure they're good and clean, nothing's crazy in there. A little old, doesn't hurt anything, but make sure there's no foreign contaminant in there. Back together with the injectors, we're about to go. It's also worth noting that we have left the glow plugs out of the truck for the moment because we're going to get these injectors in and tighten back down and we'll evacuate the cylinder by turning the truck over. Now we're just setting these injectors in here for right now. Uh, here in just a second we're going to start pushing them down and a lot of times that's easiest done with a 5 8 wrench. We'll just hook the top, push them down the most we can and then we'll use a 5 8 wrench to grab them and just kind of work them down like so. You want to push me, keep me pushed down that way. 
see how that drove it down? Mm -hmm. And now, probably the best thing to do at this point is just take the palm of your hand and smack it a few times and get it, make sure it's seated. So we'll just repeat that procedure for all the rest of them until we get them all down. So we're gonna go ahead and run our injector hold down bolts back in. And after that, we'll do our injector exhaust ports. And then we'll set the valve cover on here temporarily, spin the engine over and uh, evacuate those cylinders. Then it's back with the glow plugs, wiring harness, valve cover back on and this side goes back together. Putting, the, uh, putting these uh, injector hold downs back on, make sure you pay attention to manufacturer's torque specs. I typically don't give that information. It's best to look it up for your particular truck make and model. We've got those torqued down. We still have the glow plugs out of the truck. We're gonna lay the valve cover back in place just to kind of catch the oil shower. We're gonna stick just one bolt in the valve cover, probably the easiest one that we can get to. And we'll hook one of the batteries back up and we'll just spin the engine over a little bit with those glow plugs out. That will evacuate all that oil out of the cylinder because the last thing we want is a hydro lock when we try to start this truck. Let's uh, kick the key on, spin the engine over and evacuate the cylinders on that side. All right, we're evacuated. So it's time to put the glow plugs back in it. Then we're gonna put the undercover valve cover harness back in it, valve cover gasket back on it. And we're going to go completely back together with it. And then we'll start it up with this side done. So on these glow plugs, when you're putting those back in, make sure that you put them in by hand and don't start them with uh, like an electric impact or anything. These things cross thread pretty easy. And the last thing you want to do is have to deal with that madness. Back with the valve cover now. Back together with our 42 way. We'll just snug those things. We won't go very tight. About like that. Now is an excellent time to put back on our intercooler, our charge air cooler piping where we can get to it pretty easy. We've got the truck up and got it running. Uh, it sounds pretty good. Of course, as we expect, it takes a while to start the thing because remember we emptied that uh, that fuel or that oil log, so there was no high pressure oil in there. So you just got to turn the starter over a bunch of times to kind of repressurize that and get all that oil back in there. I think will probably start funny for a little while, um, but 
suffice to say that part's done it's back together let's go ahead and take a ride down the road and see if if we have problems i can already tell you the truck sounds so much better after just have an idle for 20 30 minutes it sounds good we're up to operating temperature everything looks normal so let's go drive it see what we've got meet you in the truck already sounds better We're just going to kind of watch some pressures here as we ride. Let's pull out here on the road and see what we've got. interstate right here kind of give it a little bit of beans see what it does Here's something else I want to tell you about real quick. Um, if you like this kind of content, if you like the diesel stuff, and if you like the, uh, uh, the just the general garage type stuff with all kinds of different things, go check out the guys over at uh, Automatic Garage. Those guys are putting out some great content. If you like this channel, 
know you're going to like their channel. So uh, go check them out. Automatic Garage. I'll put a link down in the description there. And I'll also stick a card up here at the top for their channel. Um, anyway, appreciate it, guys. So injectors fixed it. I think we're going to do a high-pressure oil pump on this truck next. So definitely stay tuned. Guys, appreciate you standing by here and watching this. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. And I'll see you next time.